It's now time for member statements. Please recognize the member for University of Rosedale. Congratulations on your election. For the past month in my riding of University of Rosedale, I have gone past a white bicycle at Bloor and St George. The bicycle doesn't move because it is a ghost bicycle. It marks the place where a cyclist was killed. That cyclist was Dahlia Chaco, a 58-year-old grandmother and mother who died near that intersection. As her son has written, she was killed while doing something she loved, riding her bicycle. She was following all the rules of the road and was in the bike lane when she was run over. Dahlia didn't have to die. Neither did Jonas Mitchell, a 35-year-old son and brother and beloved community member who was struck by a driver who ran a red light in High Park on June 8th. Nor did Douglas Crosby, a father in his 50s who was hit by a truck in Leslieville, just a few weeks short of his 25th wedding anniversary. These deaths are tragic, they're needless, and in Toronto, they have been on the rise. As a community, we have so much more to do to protect our vulnerable road users. Local advocacy groups are leading the way, groups like CycleTO, Green Park, the Toronto Centre for Active Transportation, and Advocacy for Respect for Cyclists. These groups have just recently released their Build the Vision TO report, which has been supported by the city. So, it is absolutely shocking that on July 4th this year, stakeholders received notice the Ontario government was cancelling the Ontario Municipal Commuter Cycling Program. This program was vital to the safety of our vulnerable road users and Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Member statements. Member for Barry Springwater, Oral Medante. I rise today to highlight the great work of Howard Bloom. With a doctorate in philosophy from U of T and a Master of Education focused on educational psychology, special ed, and adaptive instruction. Among his accomplishments, he co-founded a, a recreational program for at-risk youth, and it continues today. He also established Blooming Acres with two locations in my riding. Blooming Acres is a residential community for children, teenagers, and adults diagnosed with complex special needs. Accommodations are made for individuals with autism, Asperger's, pervasive developmental disorders, FAS, and other diagnoses. The individuals supported are deemed hard to serve and hard to place due to the complexity of their needs. Blooming Acres is in Ormodonte. It's a 10-bed licensed residence on 100 acres. It's a spacious farmhouse that he's expanded to 8,500 square feet. Blooming Acres Snow Valley Lodge is a 7-bed, 6,000-foot lodge in Springwater, 20 minutes from the first farm, but there's more. On Friday, July the 27th, Next week, we'll be cutting the ribbon on Apple Blossom Village. It's a spacious, state-of-the-art special care facility designed and built for adults with complex needs. There are 20 private resident suites that can be customized to meet individual requirements and preferences. There's one-to-one -one residential care support and more if needed to achieve individual support plans. Apple Blossom Village is in Oromodonte, which is shared with my colleague from Simcoe North. We're pleased to be part of the opening of this excellent facility. Member for Timmins. Well, to the Minister of Finance, I want to make a suggestion in advance of your uh, consultations that you'll be having sometime in the near future when it comes to the uh, first Conservative budget, and that is helping to support seniors at home. And there's a really simple idea that was brought forward to my constituency office by Paulette Rowlandson. And, Minister, what she's asking for is, you know those lifeline services where you're able to have a, a, a lifeline button, kind of an alert emergency thing that you can press should you need assistance of having somebody to come and check on you, should you slip and fall at home or become incapacitated? She suggests why not allow at least the cost of the monitoring and the cost of the unit itself to be used as a tax deduction uh, for your taxes so that you can get some of that money back. Obviously, seniors living at home uh, longer and people being able to function independently is better for the individual. And certainly when it comes to us as a province, it makes sure uh, that we don't have a system of health care that has more people in hospital and long-term care units than we need to. So it's a cost-saving member for the province. So to the Minister of Health and to the Minister of Finance, I want to put this uh, on your radar 
and we'll be following up by letter to give it to you so that hopefully people that need this type of service, uh, this medical alert service, are able to do it in a way that they're able to get a tax deduction at the end of the year so that it helps to defer some of the cost of having that service. Member statements. Member for Durham. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize noteworthy and exemplary leadership recently demonstrated in the Clarington community in my riding of Durham. On Friday, July 6, 2018, the Bowmanville Hospital Foundation announced an unprecedented $2 million gift from the Kemp family. This, this gift is in support of the redevelopment and expansion of Bowmanville Hospital. It's the largest gift ever received by the foundation. The future emergency department will be named in honour of Doug and Billy Kemp. Uh, the family's commitment to the hospital foundation was proudly announced by their son, Kirk Kemp, surrounded by family. I congratulate the foundation leadership, in particular Frank Sarasano, CEO, and Chris Coy, board chair, on a fabulous start to the capital campaign. And I want to personally thank the Kemp family for their generosity in the Clarington community. The Kemp family has been an integral part of the Clarington community for decades, beginning when Doug and Billy Kemp moved to the area in the mid-1900s to begin a life of farming. The, apples, the, the family's apple farm, now Algoma Orchards, is the largest independently owned apple growing and packing company in Canada. Families like the Kemp family make the community of Clarington a place that's sure to be an incredible place to live work and raise a family for decades to come. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Beaches East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations on your election. I want to acknowledge the 100th birthday of Nelson Mandela, the famed leader of my birthland, South Africa. Now, he was a leader who knew how to govern in the name of all the people. Thank you to the citizens of Beaches East York for their confidence and trust in me. Beaches East York is a staunchly progressive riding, and I am honoured to represent the community that was home to Agnes McPhail, Stanley Grizel, Francis Lankin, and most recently Michael Prue. Every day, I am approached by Beachers and East Yorkers who ask me to be strong in holding this government to account. They want their government to take the TRC's calls to action seriously and were appalled that the throne speech contained not even as much as a land acknowledgement. They want their government to end carding and other systemically racist practices for once and for all. They want a TRC curriculum and a sex ed curriculum that teaches consent and embodies respect for two-spirited LGBT kids. They understand that asylum seekers are not only legal but an asset to Ontario, that housing is a human right, and that all Ontarians deserve clean drinking water. As did Nelson Mandela, they want to live in a province that works for all of us, not just some of us. They want me to know they are more than taxpayers, they are first and foremost citizens, and I look forward to being their voice at Queen's Park. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to share how my home community of Guelph is taking steps to create jobs and tackle the climate crisis. Mr. Speaker, yesterday in the House, the Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks said that a plan for reducing emissions is forthcoming. I suggest he look to Guelph for inspiration. In May, Guelph City Council voted unanimously to adopt a goal of becoming a net zero carbon community and to have city operations powered by 100 per cent renewable energy by 2050. Just a few days ago, the city chose a sustainable green developer for the new Baker Street redevelopment that will create 950 jobs, deliver a new library, housing and commercial space, all saving energy. Last month, Guelph and Wellington County were named as one of the finalists uh, in the National Smart Cities Challenge. Their proposal for a cir circular food economy will increase access to affordable food, reduce food waste, and create 50 new businesses. Mr. Speaker, this is what climate leadership looks like. So I would like to thank the people of Guelph, Guelph City Council and staff 
for showing the rest of Ontario that building a sustainable economy and protecting our planet go hand in hand. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Mr. Speaker, uh, congratulations as, uh, as your neighbouring MPP. Congratulate you on, uh, on your election as Speaker. Um, I rise today to thank the good people of Kitchener-Conestoga for this opportunity to represent them in this legislature. I wish to express my gratitude to my campaign volunteers, who also include my incredible wife, Kim, and my five children for their commitment and sacrifice. Mr. Speaker, in the last month, I've been to community events talking to constituents across my riding, including at recent Canada Day festivals in the communities of Mary Hill, New Hamburg, and Elmira, to personally extend thanks and discuss with them how we can move forward on shared priorities. These conversations will continue at upcoming agricultural festivals in Wellesley and Baden, where I look forward to enjoying the delicious foods of Waterloo Region. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I must tell you that people are excited about the return of affordability and economic growth under Doug Ford's government. They are excited by recent legislation and announcements that will show we are fulfilling our campaign promises in tackling the deficit and cleaning up the hydro mess. As a pioneering community, Waterloo Region is delighted that our government is committed to lowering taxes and hydro rates to help individuals and businesses while protecting frontline services. They are also relieved that, there are, that we are serious in finally completing much-needed transit and infrastructure projects after 15 years of disappointment and lost opportunity. I look forward to serving Kitchener-Conestoga in this assembly over the coming years. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Ashkigawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations on being elected Speaker. I would like to thank the people from my riding, from Meshkego, Bay, James Bay, to have given me the privilege of representing them here. I would like to thank people who worked on my campaign and my colleagues, you'll be so, who encouraged me to become a candidate. I would like to thank also my wife Manon and my two children for having believed in me all that time. People with 60% Francophone, 30% First Nations. Since the throne speech, I have been receiving numerous uh, phone calls and, and texts. I have to understand, you have to understand that Francophone and First Nations have things in common. We both are very proud of our culture and our language, and we both fight constantly to maintain them. And Mr. Speaker, to hear nothing, rien, in the nothing. throne speech was a bit disappointing for both Francophones and First Nations. To see both ministries have been watered down to other ministries worries us a lot. When we enter the House, we give a sign of respect. To you, Mr. Speaker. You would only think at least a government would do is recognize the lands and territories of the First Nations we are on. And the least we could have expected from the government is to listen a throne speech, uh, just a mention in French, uh, which uh, French, which is part of both official languages. Member statements. The member for Carlton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize the outstanding achievements of two local women's softball teams from the village of Cars, located in my riding of Carlton. The two teams from the riding have made it to the Canadian National Championships. Uh, Cars Aces is the name. And the seniors women's team from the club is headed to Saskatoon for the Nationals, and the intermediate women's team from the club is headed to Moncton, New Brunswick for the Eastern Canadian Softball Championship. The head coach is Mr. Norman Adams, who has been coaching since uh, 1989. Mr. Adams reached out to me asking for 160 Ontario pins so that they can present them to the four teams they will be uh, playing before the championship rounds. We have ordered those pins, and I'm pleased uh, that we'll be providing them with the pins that they'll need soon. The National Canadian Women's Fast Pitch Championship has been going on since 19, 1965, and the Eastern Canadian Softball Championship Committee is made up of the six most eastern provinces, and uh, apparently the Canada's Pirates won gold in 2008. 
I would like to ask my fellow colleagues to please rise with me to congratulate both of these teams as they represent Ontario and wish them good luck. We have time for one more member statement. Member for Perry Sound Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to highlight some of the great things happening around Perry Sound and the 30,000 Islands area of Georgian Bay this summer. This Friday marks the start of the Festival of the Sound. This festival, which features classical, jazz, and this year folk music, is in its 39th year. Most of the concerts are held at Perry Sound's beautiful Stocky Centre, while some are held on the Island Queen during a cruise around the Sound. I also want to mention that the Island Queen has started a new tour for those who wish to get off the boat and explore one of the beautiful islands of Georgian Bay. The Islander Adventure Tour uses a 40-passenger boat to take guests on a cruise that includes an hour-long stop at Huckleberry Island, where a naturalist from the Georgian Bay Biosphere Reserve takes them on a guided tour. Finally, I want to let everyone know that Henry's Fish Restaurant at San Susi is back up and running this summer under new owners. Ted and Rachel LaRock purchased Henry's this spring, and I can tell you from personal experience, the fish is just as delicious as ever. If you don't have a boat of your own, you can get to Henry's by plane with Georgian Bay Airways. Water taxi or as part of a boat tour on the Chippewa 3. I know many people, locals and visitors alike, were disappointed when Henry's closed last summer, so I'm pleased to see it back up and running, and I wish Ted and Rachel LaRock all the best in their new endeavour. So if anyone is looking for a great getaway this summer, Perry Sound has lots to offer. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon. Reports by committees.